Hi, I'd like to talk about uh, Xcode today, and today I would like to talk about um, Apple's new programming language called Swift, which probably won't be new in the future, but uh, right now it's pretty new. Um, Swift was, you know, uh, a new idea from Apple that was to replace Objective-C. At this point, um, Swift is new, still pretty new, and it's gaining new features, and some of the features aren't fully 100% um, embedded in Xcode to work with everything that's there. So you, you may have to deal with some um, Objective-C code at this time, but in the future, I'm kind of picturing that Apple is gonna replace everything with Swift, okay? Um, Swift is a great little language. It's a lot like JavaScript. So if you're familiar with the JavaScript and those kinds of languages, um, you'll you'll be able to pick up on Swift pretty quickly. Um, Swift is very is very good. It's 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 really neat. Okay. Um, for these examples, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start in Xcode here, and I want to start with a brand new project. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this uh, playground project. So uh, let me actually back up there for a second. Um, and do that again. Um, here I am, I'm in Xcode, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this Start New Playground, okay? And this is gonna create a file called a playground, and the playground allows you to type code into a window, and it kind of assesses and evaluates that code live in the window. Um, this isn't 100% perfect. It, if you have a lot of code in a playground, it starts to get a little bogged down, but it does let you test a lot of your ideas out, and I think this is a really cool feature, and in the future, I'm sure it's going to work even better. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to click on this Get Started with a Playground, okay? And the playgrounds are files, so you can save these, right? So, you know, I can call this My Playground, or maybe I'll call this um, uh, Variables Playground. Okay, so I'll, I'll save that. And then you can put this into a folder here. Maybe I'll put this in my folder here. And there we go, here's my playground. Okay, then you can change the size here and whatnot. And what you're seeing here is there's an editor on the left side and then there's sort of a little evaluation area on the right that tells you what's happening. So you can see here that it, you know, there's a there's a comment on this line, right? So that's ignored. And then they import UI kit, which has a bunch of functions and features that we might want to use. And that doesn't output anything, so there's nothing here. And then they define a variable called str for string, and it says hello playground, and that gets evaluated here, and you see the value of string or str in the in the sidebar here. Okay. Um, so uh, so what are variables? Let's talk about variables for a minute, okay? Um, variables are names or identifiers that you create that get assigned a value, okay? So an identifier is a set of characters that you define. So in this case, there's um, you know an identifier here called str. It's short for string, okay? And uh, this identifier it begins with a letter, and then the rest of the name is made up of letters and you know, numbers or spaces. You can't use any special characters in here, okay? So you can't put the the dot in there or the dash or the asterisk, but you could use the underscore, okay? Um, and you could put a number in there if you like, okay? And that's fine. Um, so identifiers are names that you invent. So they can be any name you like. They can't be a name that already exists. So import and var are keywords, so I can't name this import like that, that would be a problem, okay? Or I can't name it var like that, that's also a problem. But string is okay. Or if I wanted to make this more descriptive, I could call it greeting like that, okay? Um, so whenever you define a variable, okay, a variable um, is assigned a value here, and you can assign it a value with the equal sign, but when you define a variable in Swift, okay, there are really two types. Okay, there's the var, and then there's let, okay? So I'm gonna make a new variable here called Joe, okay? And you can see that these two show their value here, and essentially they're acting the same way. The, the key feature here is that when you define a variable with the keyword var, 
what you're doing is you're creating a variable that's mutable or a variable that, that we'll, we'll say can change over time. So in other words, you can um, assign a new value to greeting, right? Let, on the other hand, creates an immutable variable, okay? An immutable variable can't change, okay? The value is fixed. Like once we assign a value, we can't change it. It's always the same, okay? And so why is this? Well, you know, these make the computer more efficient in some ways. So whenever you can use a, a, an immutable variable with let, it's more efficient for the computer. So giving us this option to choose when we have variables that change with var and variables that don't change with let allows our uh, program to be more as efficient as it, as it can be, right? So, and we'll, we'll test this here. So you can see, like, if I wanted to change the greeting, I could say greeting equals what's up, right? So I'll type that. And then you can see here, like it said, you know, greeting was, you know, hello playground. And then down here, greeting is now what's up, right? And if I go down here, though, and I want to change name, if I say name equals, you know, Sam, then you can see I get an error. There's nothing comes out here. And then there's this little error marker there with an exclamation point and a red sort of stop sign, right? It's telling me like, hey, you know what? This doesn't work here. So I'm going to click on this and you can see it says cannot assign to let value name. Okay, so it's saying like, hey, you know what? Let is immutable and so you can't assign it a value after you've assigned it the initial value. Okay, so I'm not allowed to do this. If I want to save that code for later but not have it affect my program, I can put the double slash in front of it and that's a comment so it gets commented out and if you're familiar with javascript um, swift uses all the same comments okay um, so one more thing before we're done with the with this let and var discussion is that when you use a variable like this okay um, you just use the var or the let the first time the variable appears okay so the first time that you define the variable or you know initialize it, so to speak, right? Um, you're gonna use the keyword var or let. Okay, so here is the first time greeting appeared in the window, okay, in this block of code. And so I use the keyword var to tell the computer like what kind of variable this is and say like, hey, I'm defining a new variable here. And then I do the same with let. But later, I don't use var, I just use the name, okay? Let's do one more thing. Let's say we wanted to create a new variable, and I'm not going to change this one, so I'm just going to use let, and I'm going to say let message equal, and what I want to do is I want to combine the greeting with the name, okay? Maybe I'll change this greeting like this, right? And what I want to do is I want to um, say message equals greeting plus name. Okay, and then you can see now it says, what's up, Joe, right? Um, maybe if I put a space in there, it'll add a space here, you can see. And, uh, and just like JavaScript, we can use the plus sign to combine or concatenate two variables together, okay? Um, Swift has another um, system also, and let me, let me do that one here. Um, I'll say let message number two equal... And here I'll use the quotation marks and I'll do the backslash and the parentheses. And what you can do with this is you can say the message, like here's a string that I want to combine with some other values. And inside this parentheses here, you can put a variable. So I can say greeting. And then if I wanted to include another variable, I could say name here, right? So that's another way to do it. So anytime you want to include a variable inside of a string, you can use this construction here with the backslash and the parentheses, and then you can see the message, what's up, Joe, okay? So there you go. There's a simple introduction to playgrounds and variables in Swift.